Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's Lunch and Learn. Um, I'm Teresa Kogar from ACE, and I'm here with my colleague, Stacy Carr. And just a few housekeeping um, items before we get started. Um, if you've been to one of our Lunch and Learns, and if you haven't, um, just so you know that we record these for educational quality purposes. Um, if you participate in this, then you are consenting to be recorded. But before we share the sessions on our archive link on our website, um, we will edit and remove any identifying information to protect your privacy. So um, no worries if you put something in the chat or um, ask us questions, we'll make sure that's removed from that ahead of time. Um, and there'll be uh, an anonymous transcript also. So without further ado, let's get started. Again, thanks for spending your lunch hour uh, with us this Thursday. We're really glad you're here. Stacey and I are gonna talk about probably I don't know, for me, it's definitely my top two favorite subjects and it's self-determination. Um, and we're gonna really uh, dive in about how to talk about that in the home and the community. So just a few agenda items, just really, um, this month has been such a great month of Lunch and Learn. So if you haven't been able to catch um, them uh, as they have happened on Thursday, please visit our archived um, website, our link for that, and, and especially watch this month's Lunch and Learns. They all have um, revolved around self-determination, and we've had self-advocates, and we've had folks in the field who use these, uh, teach these components daily and are working um, boots on the ground helping folks. So really want to make sure you um, get to watch those. We're going to talk about some of those components of self-determination, give you some tools and examples that are used by a specific state project that we have here in Virginia called I'm Determined. Um, and then again, just really talking about ways to, to use these tools across settings. So why self-determination? Well, if you have followed the, the month-long series um, and you've listened to these self-advocates, it's so important that we build um, skills in ourselves and in our students. And um, all of us have components of self-determination. I was thinking this morning, um, self-regulation is a component of self-determination. And I need to do more of that to keep myself um, going throughout the day. And so we learn these things, um, either they're taught to us or we learn them incidentally. And we, I think what's important to remember, especially with our students and the population we work with, is it's really important to teach those skills to them and reinforce them and, and to do that throughout the lifespan. So that's really important. Um, for those K-12 supports, because we can build components of self-determination in preschool or even younger. So we're, Stacey and I are big on building those skills to support independence, because no matter where you're at um, in your life, you want some sort of independence and you want to be able to be involved in your community. And it's really important um, to be included in what's going on in your community whether they come from a large community or a small community. And again, just empowering students to believe in themselves, knowing what they need um, and knowing what they need in their present, I should say present and future and help them um, know what they need to be uh, successful daily. Stacey, do you have anything to add on that? No, I think <laughs> one of the things that, <clears throat> of course you, Teresa is the, the queen of self-determination and I, mm -hmm. I absolutely love um, talking with her about this. But I think one of the things that um, students often struggle with is that um, self-awareness and self um, feeling like they can do things. And these tools are so great because they, they really um, document, help students document how they are, how they can be successful um, and what their strengths are and really looking at their strengths and using those strengths to um, fulfill their, their dreams and their wants and, and um, post-secondary opportunities. So, yay. Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you, Stacey. That's sweet. Yeah, excellent. Exactly. So, you know, for me, um, also doing a lot of research in this and just working with folks as well is, again, I go back to that teaching um, component. So, you know, um, Waymeyer, who is one of the, the godfathers of self-determination, there's lots of research he's done on this. Students who have self-determination skills really do have that stronger chance of being successful in employment and independent living, those post-secondary um, goals that Stacy's talking about. And again, 
you may be uh, someone who has a young child or uh, maybe you're an elementary or preschool teacher, you think, well, yeah, they'll develop that later. But again, the importance of, of this is to really help develop those skills early. So as they go on throughout the years, they already know what they can do, what they're successful at, maybe some other things they want to explore based on interests that they've had or that they continue to explore. And just again, looking at what could my life be like? What are my own personal dreams, as Stacy mentioned, and my wants really taking that person-centered approach and looking at, okay, so how could, how could I be what I want to be? What steps do I have to take and who's going to help me get there? So uh, this has been in um, several of our presentations, but you know, I just think you can never um, show this enough. I, I love that this is when the new visual supports on um, the I'm Determined um, site and that's imdetermined.org. And uh, again, it's just really so essential. All of these components are things that we have learned are part of our, who we are as a person that we continue to work on. And I think that's an important thing to remember is just once I, if I'm working with a student, I've helped them start to self-regulate, just doesn't stop there. I have to continue to reinforce and learn how to self-regulate, and they do, right, the rest of their lives. So if a student um, is anxious and they say to me, hey, you know that pacing that I do, that actually really helps me. So we can build times into that student's day um, where they can self-regulate by going for a walk, um, walking with a friend, walking on a treadmill, whatever, right, whether it's a home or community, finding that, that outlet for that self-regulation um, throughout the day. And again, you know, when we think of self-determination, a lot of folks think self-advocacy. And again, that's a huge part of it because that's, for me, kind of the, the end picture, right? We want to continue to always be self-advocates, but we can't be a self-advocate if we don't have these other things in place, right? The ability to make choices. And that's also us giving them the ability to, to know that they can make choices, that they have choices to make. Um, being able to problem solve things. You know, we're working with folks who have executive functioning issues. And so sometimes we have to model that problem solving process and then help them um, model that back to us. And so it's just really important to remember all of these things as we move forward. And Stacy, um, of course, mentioned self-awareness, which is really huge. And, and what's so eye-opening for me, and I know Stacy agrees, is once a student really becomes self-aware of all of these other things, it really the light bulb comes on, it really opens the door for them to um, really want to explore more of who they are and how they can be successful. So we got a couple of tools we want to talk to you about today because it's all about, hey, you can do this tomorrow and you really can. And so if you, again, uh, I'm determined um, is a state project run by Virginia Department of Education. And, you know, we talk about it's not just a special education thing. It's really an education thing. So anybody can use these. Stacey and I are actually going to show our own examples of these two tools. And honestly, um, we encourage you even as a parent or caregiver or a teacher to fill out these tools and fill the, and excuse me, and to um, share them with the students that uh, and individuals you're working with across settings. So one of the um, awesome tools that we like to share is called a one pager. And this has been shown in presentations um, throughout our lunch and learns, but if you haven't seen this, it's a really great tool to, to get the ball rolling, right? It's a great um, tool to get to know um, students to open the door to building stronger rapport. <clears throat> and so initially the one pager looks like this. It says my strengths, my interests, my preferences and my needs. And you can see there's a few perhaps guiding questions that you could ask um, your students underneath these. Um, but again, really just finding out these four categories and what really works for them. One of the things that you can do is actually change those headings if you want as well. So, you know, I was just uh, sitting there doing some professional learning communities for a division that we're working with. And yesterday, actually, one of the folks said, hey, I, I changed the last one to say accommodations I need. And absolutely, we have to do what works for the student and for you as the um, person who's helping that student. So these headings can change, but one of the really important things, especially taking that person-centered approach and finding out and building self-determination skills are what are the interests of the individual and what are their strengths? 
so that we can really hone on those in order to teach that student to be successful and show others what their abilities are. So I, um, Stacy, I've been training teams of folks. So I um, am a very visual learner. And so I really do think in pictures and, and think when someone says something, I actually think of a picture as well. So um, you can see we changed uh, some of the headings on this. Um, my strengths, I like to think or that I am a visual person. I actually see my calendar in my head. Um, like today I can see the actual calendar in my notebook and the times and you kind of are what you teach sometimes, but <laughs> that's why I get the population I teach because I really understand how they think. Um, my interests, uh, my lifelong interest has always been music. I'm, I'm actually a musician. Uh, I actually have a bachelor's degree in music education and people think that that's a lie, but it's true. And um, I, I love music. Uh, and recently I've been into thrift shopping. And so I, I love it. I'm looking for antique stuff and old furs and maybe that's not PC, but you know, that's kind of stuff I'm looking for. Um, and then, you know, I have some challenges and, and you know, Stacy, this is important. This is what's really important in working with our students and with our teammates. I had to be really real about my challenges. Stacy is a colleague that I work with on many different projects. Um, and sometimes it's hard for me to let things go. <laughs> and, and so uh, I have not wanted to admit that. And with Stacy being a colleague of mine, I think it's important for her to know that because then she can say, as she did yesterday, hey, you've got this, it's okay, right? So that made me in my visual mind think of, you know, let it go, right? The, the song and, and Elsa. So I put that on mine as my challenges because I know that about me. And I know if I want to continue to be successful, I have to put that out of my mind and, and move on or that's going to that's gonna bring me down. And that's important for our students. And, you know, Stacy made a good um, point earlier when she says, you know, sometimes we don't know either what we're really good at um, or even what some of our challenges are. So, you know, we want to do that in a, in a positive and proactive way for our students in order to help them. And then the lovely Stacy Carr, she has a great one pager. Do you want to talk about yours? Sure. So um, I, uh, I'll start with strengths. I think I'm a pretty good listener. Um, I like to think outside the box. I, I like problems and then I like creative solutions for them. Nah, I don't like problems, but I like creative <laughs> solutions for them. Um, I think I'm funny. Uh, I, people might not agree, but hey, it doesn't matter. I think I'm funny. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, are. My interests, music. I really love music. I'm not talented like Teresa. I play the radio really well, <laughs> um, but I like to try to sing along. Um, I love soccer, play soccer, uh, animals. I will be driving to visit Teresa and visit different divisions and I will slow down so that I can talk to the cows. And I really believe they want me to talk to them. Um, they do. My family they do. and my kids are, and my friends are really important to me. I love spending time with them. Um, my preferences, you know, I, I'm not good at reading and then knowing what to do um, or hearing something and then doing it. So I really like to learn by, by doing it hands-on. So I love this Benjamin Franklin quote, tell me and I forget, teach me and I remember, involve me and I learn. And I think that's really true. And it's true for a lot of our students too. You know, you can, you can have the visuals, you can have the verbal, but when you can do some hands-on kinesthetic learning, that sometimes helps a lot. Um, <clears throat> what do I need for my teammates? And Teresa is a fabulous teammate, um, as our other colleagues on this um, Lunch and Learn. I don't remember things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I need people to um, send me reminders. They need to email me. I am so willing to help, but I, if sure. you just tell me, I, I'll forget. So I, I have post-it notes everywhere, um, emails, stars, and all that sort of stuff. Um, and I need people to be willing to work with me um, because I do have some of these interesting challenges. <laughs> Wait, that's awesome. You are a, an awesome teammate. And, and I wanna, we have questions at the end, but I do wanna address since we're talking about the one page. Yeah, I was looking at that too. 
And yeah, go ahead, Stacey. You know, John, um, thank you for your question. Uh, you know, Stacy and I always, and, and uh, you know, I've been training folks on this a long time. And one of the things we do recommend is, yeah, that you do these tools, you fill them out first, right? And when we train teams, we actually have teams um, fill them out and then bring them back to us the next time, like these professional learning communities that we're doing. And, you know, it's just an, it's just an aha. It's just an eye opener, right? I think for maybe yourself, but also, again, it, it really helps um, build a rapport with your teammates. Stacy and I were working with a middle school team and we had everybody on that middle school team filling out and then they hung it up in their, um, their office that they share together. And um, just like Stacy and I, I mean, Again, I'm low threshold and she's high threshold, right? She's into the <laughs> soccer and the move. And I'm just like, okay, I got to get moving. I, I'm motivated during the day, but in order to get my, get pumped up, I've, I've, someone's got to tell me to move, right? And Stacey's always moving, right? So that it's good to know about each other because she can help me with that. She is a good listener, thank God, because I talk her ear off and, and I'm the person who needs that good listener because remember, I'm the person who can't let it go. And so when I have a person who's a good listener, it's like peanut butter and jelly. It just comes together. <laughs> so I'm very thankful. So, you know, John, I, I don't know if that answered your question, but the other great thing is to really um, then, you know, we've got to be human, right? And we've got to share um, ourselves with our students and model what we want to see from them, right? So, you know, we've had teachers put their one pagers in their good day plans, you know, up on their board in the classroom, because remember, you could do this with a whole class, Right. And um, so, John, I think that's a great question. We, we do um, really advise for folks to fill these out themselves and, and share it. I mean, you could even share it with a you know, significant other, right, or whoever. Um, it's just a really good tool to find out things about one another. I really think it's a, a nice way to show your vulnerabilities also and to let people realize, your students realize, hey, my teacher or my mom or my dad or whoever <laughs> they have things that they are, are challenges for them too. And they're not these superhuman beings. Right. Um, right. Uh, I also like doing this for a class because they're, whether you have a disability or not, some people are, have a hard time talking about themselves or Absolutely. opening up. And this is a nice visual support to do that. So you can learn from each other what your strengths and interests are and maybe start to develop some of those friendships. So, you know, music. Teresa and I love music. We love the same kind of music. So we can talk about music. We can go listen to music together. Right. If I didn't know that she liked music, I wouldn't know that that was a common interest that we could Absolutely. build a friendship on. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and thanks, Stacey. And, you know, and, and John, just one more thing. I think it's important, you know, especially as teachers, right? If we it helps us sometimes go through the process ourselves so that we know how to teach it to somebody else. Um, so I, for me, some of these things have really helped me um, think about that and how I would, how I would present and teach some of these things to our folks, especially me being a visual learner and working primarily with students who are visual learners. I understand why they need that, and I get that, and so um, it's helpful to do that. Great question, thank you. All right, thanks, Dave. Okay, I can't shift down. <laughs> I got like a stuck button. Okay. All right. So, so this is from um, a guy named Brian. And again, you know, the other um, thing that Stacey and I like to talk about, especially when we're talking about with individuals on the spectrum or any uh, individual who has a um, communication deficit, so to speak, is that uh, no matter where you are in that continuum of communication, you can't Communication is within us, okay? And so we have to find what is that. I, again, am very visual. I, I look at this one in words and I'm gonna show you a good day plan that I did in words. I will tell you that I look at this and it kind of, my mind just kind of goes, I read it and yeah, but I won't remember this. I won't remember this. But if you put pictures next to this, if you put a picture of a math book or a person, you know, maybe a construction worker for hard worker or whatever is valuable to me, I'll remember that better than just reading these words. So communication is words, pictures, objects, uh, oncom devices. You know, you can take these tools and program them into a community. Augmentative, excuse me, communication devices, and you should. So that is really kind of my soapbox because 
when I was working on this project years and years ago, um, people would tell us this doesn't work for my kids who have limited verbal ability or what some folks may uh, call nonverbal, but everyone has verbal abilities within them. Verbal doesn't always mean just spoken language. And so we have to be able to get in there and reach out and find what they use. And if it's objects, if you go to the I'm Determined page, there's some videos called Differentiating, One Page or Differentiating the Good Day Plan. And it shows you how to use a one pager with objects. And you could literally have my strengths, you know, painting. And maybe you have a little piece of a paintbrush or whatever, again, um, is right, valuable, reinforcing to that student. And maybe you just start there, but we have to start um, using these as communication tools and realizing that everybody has the capacity and ability um, to bring this to us. So thank you. <laughs> so so uh, my friend Brian, and see, I think this is really cool because, you know, my friend Brian, I knew that he was really smart, but when I really look at this, he is now, um, actually a math and science teacher at a high school. And he was a person who didn't think that he would be able to go into education, okay, as a learning disability. Um, he sold insurance for a long time. And he's like, hey, I'm gonna go back to school to be a teacher. I'm like, dude, you totally should. So this, this guy is so good at math. He's one of those people, he's not been identified on the spectrum. And I'm not sure that he is, but he definitely is that person who's gonna remember all those numbers, your birthday, um, he, his intense interests have really made him such a good teacher because he understands, especially kids at the high school level, understands what's going on. Um, he does need help making friends, doesn't always say the, the right things, um, still needs help working in teams, um, but is, is, is getting there. And so it's just important to know those things. So, you know, just continue to think to yourself, and I know think outside of the box is always a term that used, but it really is true. Like we don't have to keep ourselves in a box with any tool that we ever use. So, you know, how would you use this in the workplace? Again, Stacy and I revamped this to work in a workplace by changing some of those titles. I want my teammates to know um, that, you know, I, um, on the things that I need. One of mine was, you know, I need to know when there's a schedule change. And that doesn't always happen. Sometimes you don't find out till the day of. And guess what? All oh, same things with our students. And so, right, we try to put as many proactive things, we, you know, might put something on the schedule or we might know the day before and we try to prep people. But you might find out the day of, the moment of, the minute before. And so what tools are we giving? That goes back to problem solving, decision making, right? coping? How, how are we giving our uh, folks the skills to say, well, hey, that didn't really work out for me, but here's plan B. Here's what I can do. And so, again, even in the community, so um, you can have a one pager for home, you can have one for school, you can have one for work. It's okay. You can have one that goes across all three if that works better for you. Um, just really do what works for the individual you're working with. And really just kind of think of it as that transition um, from home to school. And for folks that are in the schools, one of the things we've been um, talking to folks about is using the one pager as part of the IEP or 504 is a great way to open up the IEP. Um, again, it sets a different tone, right? Because the IEP should be about the, the person involved. So if you've got... Um, we even had, had kindergartners, guys, you know, start their IEPs with, hey, my name is so-and-so. Maybe they do a quick PowerPoint or maybe they just um, are just there talking about themselves, whatever works for that student. But having that changes the tone of the meeting and really makes it about that individual. And then, of course, as we go through out, especially school, we want to include that individual in the IEP as much as we can. Um, and so we definitely want to use tool, tools like this so they feel that they can come to the meeting with something and be able to, to talk about it. But that was the same in the community. If I go to work, I can pull out my one pager um, and, per, and perhaps, you know, even put it, it, it's an app now also, right? So what, how, how, what a great inclusive tool to be able to bring my iPad or my phone and just pull out my one pager, right? And show it to my boss or my teammate. Um, so again, I think when I was thinking, talking about thinking outside the box, I hope I relate some of the benefits. Stacy, do you uh, have anything else to say on these couple? 
No, I think people are so very different. Um, and we, and I'm gonna generalize, we don't take the time to learn about each other. Right. Um, you know, I think about any team that I've been on and we kind of jump to conclusions about people because of how they behave or how they communicate or how they um, do something. But if we take the time to learn these things, perhaps we can see the commonalities in people rather than the differences. Perfect, perfect point. Thank you. Okay, so that's the one pager. And so then another awesome tool is called the Good Day Plan. And again, I can never figure out which one is my favorite because I really like them both, but they're both just as beneficial. <clears throat> and the Good Day Plan, again, um, use this tool however you need. And it's just really exciting to talk to folks and how they are using it. Um, the good day plan has four categories. What happens on a good day? Does it happen now? What needs to happen to make it a good day and who can help me? And, you know, oftentimes, um, you know, again, I have to think for myself, you know, what does make a good day for me, right? And we really want to instill and empower our folks to say, you know what, I can have a good day. Just because I have a disability it doesn't mean that I'm not capable, I can't do things, um, I can do things. And so I've got to let people know what those are so that I'm successful throughout the day. And then really um, what needs to happen now, that's that problem solving piece, right? That we need to help our folks with because some of our folks may not be able to tell you that at the beginning. Um, and that's okay. Again, that's where we model and we put, hey, when you um, set your timer for 10 minutes, that's what helps you be successful. Sometimes we have to point that out to our folks. And then they start to learn that. Um, and then who can help me? You know, we always, it's okay to have support, but the goal, right, is to promote independence and to uh, that self-regulation, that self-efficacy piece, that self-awareness that, hey, I mean, I love working with Stacy, but you know what? I, I can actually, I, I am okay doing this by myself <laughs> today. And that it sure is better with her, but I can do it. And so that's really, really important, especially for our folks to, um, to make sure that we instill that in them because when they get to adolescent adult world, um, right, they're more susceptible to things. Um, and Stacy's really better at talking about that than I am, but the things that um, we want them to be aware of, stranger danger, those types of things, and to be able to be self-aware and to know what I need, what I don't like, what I want, what makes the world go around for me is, is much better. So it's yeah, go ahead really Sorry. important to know that it's okay to ask for help. Right. Um, I think we get hung up not thinking that if we ask for help, that's a weakness, but we all need help all the time. So who, who can help me regulate myself? Who can help me um, when I don't understand something? And, you know, I, I think about um, if you have this in, in a work setting, it's important to know that. So if I have a question about something, I can think, okay, instead of sitting here stewing about this question, I could email my boss or email a colleague, or maybe I have a safe person I can talk to. Um, so that, again, it builds that independence, but also promotes um, success. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. And, and, you know, one of the ways, again, if we just look at this one, Again, thinking about how do we use this across home and community. Um, this is, I, I like this one because, you know, it uses a lot of those things that Stacy just mentioned. Um, you kind of have a, a task analysis with pictures here, right? So what happens on a good day? I put my coat in my locker, I use the bathroom, I clock in on time. How great is that? It's right there in the good day plan. Uh, does it happen now? I mean, it's okay to be honest. Like, hey, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so that's all right. What do you got to do? I mean, that's... Um, that's the part where we want folks to be successful and be real about it, right? So um, doesn't mean you're not ever gonna get there. You are gonna get there. And how are we gonna do that? We're gonna set that timer ahead of time and who's gonna help you with that dad. And so again, when we're talking about communication, use what um, you know is, is feasible for the student and how they communicate. If it's a thumbs up, thumbs down, even a thumbs to the side, if it's um, the words, okay, you know, whatever it is, you can put that in there. Another thing with a good day plan is um, don't feel like you have to do all of this at one time. Maybe you're looking at this thing and this is too much for my student. 
Let's just start with column one. What happens on a good day? Let's start there. And then let's do that for a few weeks and let's just reinforce this first thing right here. Hey, you put your coat in your locker, you use your bathroom. And then we move to section two. Hey, look, this is happening every day now. Hey, do you know how you're getting there? And then we put that in. Okay, so again, remember, especially if you're an educator, you got to scaffold this stuff, right? This is still teaching. <laughs> so do use your good teaching skills and put these things into place. Okay, this is stuck here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> okay, my button is stuck. Um, so this was this was my old good day plan, and I have to change it up because, and that's what's important too, right? Like, hey, my good day has changed. And so I've got to change it up. I used to talk to a friend of mine every morning, especially when we were on the road and we'd we'd talk and um, you know, I talked to her almost days daily. We had to call each other before eight because you know that's when our workday officially starts. <laughs> and um, but uh, you know, things have changed, we don't get to do that anymore. But you know, that was a real kind of loss for me because I really uh, I get up early and she gets up early and I really enjoy just talking to her about life and work and whatever. Um, but that's okay, life changes, but so that's not happening anymore. So I've had to find something else, right? I can't depend on that anymore. And um, that's okay, I can look for something else as the outlet because that was kind of a self-regulation thing for me too. So is coffee. So right now I'm, I'm drinking some coffee um, and yes, I have it almost daily. I have to make sure I get up and make it or like before this presentation, make sure I have enough time to make one. And only I can do that. And again, coffee for me isn't about, uh, oh, I need a cup of coffee, oh, I'm feeling so. Again, for me, it's kind of a comfort, right? I have, I feel comfort when I have something warm. Um, it could be a hundred degrees outside and I'll be sitting on the porch with a cup of coffee and everybody else have a glass of iced tea or a, an adult beverage or something else. <laughs> and me, I'm like, oh, it's, coffee time, you know. So um, again, to do to do list. And then one of the things that really uh, I, I've kept in my new good day plan is just really um, trying to let my mind go at night, stop work at a certain time and, and really start reading for leisure. I, I uh, am a bit of a nerd and I could read about work related things all day and night long. And I, I still normally do that, but I'm really just trying to find other things to read that are of my interests um, before bed. So I kind of revised it. And again, so remember I told you, I look at this, I will tell you, this isn't working for me. I revised this and I'm gonna have to put pictures in it because I look at this and and for me personally, this does not work for me. It might work for Stacy. I can hand this to her and she'll know this about me. But for me to communicate to someone, I need pictures. So um, some things I've had to revise is, um, I need a mid-morning snack at 10. Uh, I'm getting older, some things are changing in my body and I get hangry. <laughs> so at 10 <laughs> o'clock, <laughs> so I realize that hmm, if I go beyond 10 o'clock and I don't have a snack, I'm not a, I'm not a nice person to be around. And is that a good day for me or for the other people I'm with? Absolutely not. So I really do have to make sure I have available. I actually, uh, just before this, bought some, you know, Laura bars, you know, I have to have those nuts or those bars. Those things are gonna keep fueling me throughout the day. Cause remember I'm that low threshold person, right? So I can go, right? And if I don't have something fueling me or keeping me going, and I've also involved uh, putting more movement breaks. So I'm not <clears throat> traveling as much right now and I'm not walking and doing as much as I used to. And again, for somebody who's low threshold, I've got to build it in or I'm not going to do it. And so thri a high threshold person is be like, yeah, okay, I got to move, I got to do it. Okay, let's, me, I'm like, okay, see you later. Tell me when you get back. I'm going to be right here doing my work. Um, and so for some folks, we might see that as, right, maybe as lazy as some of our students are classified as or, right, uh, non-motivated. But really take a look at that because um, I, f I feel that way, but I know that I'm not. It's that I literally am just, I'm just low. I'm just here. <laughs> I don't need to be pumped up all the time. Um, and then again, doing some leisure stuff. So enough of that. Uh, so this is another individual that we have. Then um, how about you, Stace? Yep, so um, Teresa 
you know, I, she said, you need to update your good day plan. I said, you know, you're right. <laughs> and I really, I did this really recently and I think it's, uh, it's a really nice way to transition to setting goals for yourself. Yeah, that's um, a good point. So I have a lot of the similar things that Teresa does. Um, I need caffeine or else I will kind of sloth, sloth my way through the morning. <laughs> um, I do need to wake up early enough um, to have a little bit of quiet time before I dive into emails and things. Um, I like to sit with my dog in the morning and we have a little routine. Um, I need a productive day at work or the end of the day comes and I feel like I've wasted the day. I need healthy meals without snacking. Um, I could snack on pretty much anything and, and would. Um, so, and I also need a good night's sleep. And if I don't have a good night's sleep, like this whole cycle gets thrown off. Does it happen now? No, not all of this really. Um, <laughs> sometimes I wake up early. Um, a lot of times I wake up and get right, right to work, um, which is the dining room. Uh, caffeine does happen every day. Um, exercise, you know, sometimes I'd like to do more. Um, productive at work, most of the time I am. There are definitely days that are a little bit slower because I didn't have a good night's sleep. Um, and healthy meals without snacking. Yep, I have healthy meals pretty much every day. That snacking piece is a challenge. And when you have a teenage son at home with <laughs> really cool snacks, I just find myself right there eating them. <laughs> um, and so then I really had to think about what are the things that I need to do to, to make this happen for me and who can support me. And when I think about this, I realize that, oh, okay, so I could actually ask my husband to, you know, make sure that. I don't press snooze 50 times before getting out of bed or that um, my family, if they have snack foods, they're in a different place in the house or maybe we only have healthy snack foods. Um, but then I realized, you know, the things that are important that I need to keep control of and, and you know, like I'm Teresa's, it was her. And I, you know, to be accountable for myself, I know what I need to do. And you know, this is one of the other tools that we're not gonna have time to talk about it today is goal plan, goal setting and, and planning. Um, and this is a really nice template and really good way to teach students how to set those goals and move towards, because um, that, that's a really hard thing to do and to set meaningful and smart goals and meet those goals. So um, Good point. There we have it. Great point. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you um, definitely at some point we'll talk about um, goal setting some more. But thank you, uh, Stacey. That's a great point because right, this really is that's really is the next step. And uh, again, there's a, a great template for that. Um, there's lots of templates for goal setting, but um, the I'm determined does have a great uh, template for there for that because it helps show you, you the results um, that you could get by attaining your goal. Um, and, the, and the steps you need to take. And, you know, especially when you're goal setting, that's really one of the hardest parts is, you know, stepping out, task analyzing, hey, what do I need to do in order to get there? And then um, coming back and working with folks saying, okay, so what, how do I get there? What are the next steps? So again, um, you know, I, we've talked a little bit about this. Just remember, especially working with individuals with autism spectrum disorder, everything, needs to be used as a communication tool. It really does. It's not just a piece of paper for me or a piece of paper for that individual. It really is a two-way communication tool. Um, and we got to open up that world. Again, about promoting that independence. I mean, how cool, right? That uh, we can get folks to, you know, um, if I have to make coffee for myself, I'm not going to depend on anybody else. I can get up. I can put that, make sure whatever coffee I want that day, I can put it next to my Keurig and it's ready to go in the morning so I don't have to worry about looking for it or, or making a choice on what I'm going to do. Maybe I've made the choice the night before. And again, just a proactive tool to help with self-management. And that is such a huge piece, right? We want folks to be able to self-manage their own behaviors. Um, again, I don't want to always be it's dependent on Stacy as I am sometimes, and she's really nice to help fade that out. But you know, it really is about trying to self-manage um, your own behaviors. 
there's a great so. comment in the chat saying yeah. that this does not have to be um, in person. It could be virtual. Um, Absolutely. And I couldn't agree more. And especially with um, the, the wonderful COVID, we've had a lot of opportunity to be creative about um, getting support and having people um, interact through Zoom, through emails, um, Snapchat, whatever, um, just to get that support that we need. Right, absolutely. And, you know, I was just think about, think about like a, even a job interview, right? And, and via Zoom, you could pull up your one page as part of your portfolio on Zoom and, and show that to your, to your boss hopefully to be right <laughs> and or with friends or you know we've got folks who've been um sharing this with their loved ones or relatives that you know i think the one maybe positive about zoom and COVID is that we are able to reach um, folks that we've never been able to reach before um, and so being able to share these things that's a great point so again, just in closing, you know, just really wanting to build those self-determination skills across settings and just, just know that you can truly do this across settings. Um, and just, it's really important that for us to provide those social communication opportunities. So again, um, that's in different social realms, whether that's at the movie theaters, once we get those back open, <laughs> right? <laughs> Restaurants, um, you know, a trip to the gym, whatever that is. Um, back, you know, returning to school and of course at home. And, you know, we know things look different in all those different places. So that's why we want to give you the tools to build the skills that you need across those different settings because individuals with autism will tell you, sometimes I have to put a mask, and we're like this too, if you really think about it. I have to put a mask on when I'm in this setting and I have to learn all these social rules. And then I have to move on to this setting and it's a new set of social communication rules, right? And then I have to put on a different mask. And once I heard that, I it really made a lot of sense to me because I think so many of us are like that, but we've learned to move through those social realms, right? Because we've been given tools to help us. So these are just two examples of tools that um, hopefully we'll be able to help with that. So we'd love to hear any questions. Um, gosh, you guys have been a, a great audience. What can we, um, what's in the chat and what questions do we have and what can we help you with? Okay, well, we have had some discussions kind of happening in the chat. Um, you know, uh, John shared a little bit about, you know, he said he really related to what you had put up there about um, Brian and, and the example that you shared. Um, and, and what I think is interesting about that is just seeing that, you know, right away, even just seeing that he automatically related to some of those things, just like you were talking about. So sharing um, this with others is, is really neat. Um, and it looks like um, we have some other stuff, someone's sharing a little bit about their son. There's lots of stuff in here. Okay, great. Yeah, no, I was just looking through too. You're reading but, through it. Yeah, no, and thank you, uh, John, and, and thank you for sharing um, about your life and, and your diagnosis. Um, we're really glad you're here, and, and that's important for you to thank you for, for sharing that with us because um, we'd love to, you know, chat with you more and get your experiences and, and how we can um, help folks. And um, Ding Lin, um, great to hear about your son, uh, Kenny, who's 22 and independent. Um, you're right, self-advocacy is crucial. Uh, and you know what? I'd love that you're talking about YouTube, right? And showing different jobs. I mean, I was actually talking to someone the other day. So I graduated high school. I don't care. I'm going to date myself. I don't care. 1992, I graduated high school. And when I went to college, like the World Wide Web, all that stuff was just coming out. There was no YouTube. There was none of that stuff. I think to myself, man, how, uh, especially being a visual learner, how much more successful could I have been uh, even in college had I been able to Google something or YouTube <laughs> a video or have something. And I just think the opportunities that we have, uh, I really appreciate, uh, Ding Lin, that you're talking about um, the proactive ways in using those things, showing your son different jobs um, and, and helping him prepare PowerPoint. That's awesome and, and present it to teams. So yay, uh, Kenny, congrats to you and um, for doing that because that's, that is awesome. 
And um, you're also, I love that you talked about providing exposure and that's, you know, kind of what Stacey and I want to talk about today with using these different tools across settings because, um, you know, it's easy to keep the folks and ourselves in bubbles. Honestly, COVID's kind of put me in a bubble and I've kind of stayed there and it's not actually good for me. <laughs> um, and so I think it's really great that um, to expose people um, to different things. And like you said, he's advocating for himself at his job. That's awesome. That is awesome. And um, saying, hey, you can't expect me to work to 10. I mean, I say that to Stacy, but it doesn't work, but no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally joking about that. <laughs> But it is important. I, I, but that is really so important because you're right. Um, you have to know who you are as a person and what works for you. And um, I just really like that he's self advocating for himself and days off. That's awesome. Um, and and John, way to go, dude. I, I mean, I just would love to get to know you. I mean, I love that you're a teacher in mental health situations, and I'm I know that who you are as a person and your experience. I'm sure is just uh, making a world of difference for those students. Um, and if there's any way that Stacy and I can help you in the future, um, please reach out to us because we would we would love to work with you and your students. And I know Stacy is actually uh, an expert in the mental health field, and um, she that's her thing. And uh, besides many other things, but she is uh, actually Stacy. I'm sorry, you could tell me your background because I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a developmental psychologist. Thank you. Um, I didn't want I didn't want to mess up what kind of psychologist. <laughs> and um, I think, you know, if we think about um, mental health differences and some of the co-occurring conditions with autism, anxiety and depression, um, as two of the major ones, these supports really can help tamper that a bit. So if you have anxiety about um, transitions or, or work or what have you, these good day plans and, and putting these things in place can really support you in being successful during the day. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, gosh, such, such rich um, comments and questions and really appreciate that. Yeah. Um, and again, thanks for everyone who attended today. And again, um, you know, I appreciate Stacy because I um, was supposed to do this by myself. And then I said, hey, uh, you know, we really do this better together. Do you mind, um, you know, hanging in with me? And of course, she's, she's good at that last minute change. <laughs> I'm good at asking for last minute change and she's good at coming at last minute. So I really do appreciate you, Stacey. And thank you so much because it wouldn't have been as a rich of discussion without her. So I appreciate that. Um, and again, if you have any questions, comments, our um, website is vcuautism.org. Um, Autism Center. Autism Center. <laughs> 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 Maybe I need another cup of coffee. Autismcenter.org. Uh, thank you. And um, we've got such a plethora of stuff on there, but we definitely have all these lunch and learns. Sign up for next month. It's going to be awesome. And we're also going into May, correct, Stacy? And uh, yep. um, we've actually been doing this for a whole year now. So we have lunch and learns. So please don't ever worry if you miss one because we have them archived. And um, again, if you want a specific topic or want to know about something, reach out to us. We'll be happy to um, help you out. Yep. Well, that's all I have. Thanks. Thanks to everyone else who supports us on these. Appreciate it. Go ahead. I asked just what, to make sure there is everything's clear. These um, resources, the two that you shared today, they can get those on the I'm Determined site. Yes? And yes. yes. And uh, okay. thank you for that because I normally... Uh, put that in and, and I did not this time. So thanks, Katie. Well, yes. I put the I am determined site in the chat. So if anyone yes. wants to hop up there um, Abs and grab. Yeah. Thank you so much, Katie. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm determined.org. Yeah, it's uh, okay. again, a free website like ours at ACE. They are uh, the Virginia Department of Education uh, project. And again, just great resources on there. They're totally free. Um, the templates for the one page and the good day plan and the goal setting that Stacy talked about are on there. Um, and you can just download to your desktop. Again, you can, they're free uh, apps for um, Apple and 
Android. Android. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and uh, remember, I'm the person who graduated in 1992. And <laughs> so you could write, it's really, really important. So appreciate you all. I, this has been great. Thanks so much. And okay. if you ever need support in how to get started with any of these tools with your son or daughter or your students, please reach out to Teresa or myself. Absolutely. And we'd be more than happy to do that. Absolutely. It would be our pleasure. It's actually something we we love to do. So yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, All right. Well, Thank you everyone. Have a Take care. Have a great rest of the week. Enjoy the weather next couple of days. Good. We'll all right. Thanks, Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, John. Nice to Bye, see John. you. Thank you. Reach out to us, John. We'd love to talk to you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. If anyone would like to do a lunch and learn, yeah. um, please email me, and we would certainly love to have you, too. I think John was typing.